Hello guys, welcome back to the final DSFR of the season, the season finale. The star is disappointing us? No, that can't be. But again, I was expecting a lot more from this team. A few more wins would have gotten them in the playoffs. I think they were three points back of playoff spots, and just a few more points from that eight-game losing streak would have done it a lot better. Having a couple of wins in that eight-game losing streak could have gotten in the playoffs, but no, you don't want to do that. You don't want to give your fans playoffs on your 25th anniversary, no, that would just be terrible. Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan, and today I'm going to be telling the story of the 2019-2020 Dallas Stars, a team that went from one of the worst, if not the worst team in the NHL in October, to the Stanley Cup Final. Now, I'm obviously a Dallas Stars fan, but if you watch the Stars, beat the Vegas Golden Knights and thought to yourself, how the heck did this happen? One, you're not alone. And two, in this video, I'll do my best to explain everything that's led up to this point and the journey, the crazy one, by the way, the Stars have had this season. So, when it comes to being worse in the NHL and now to the Stanley Cup Final, how the heck did this happen? And what can we learn from this 2020 Dallas Stars team, even if they don't win the Stanley Cup this year? Watch till the end for all the info and my opinions, and of course, hit that big red subscribe button alongside that like button for more videos just like this one. Now, I'm recording this the night of the Stars advance in the Stanley Cup Finals, so I've just kind of been dancing around my room, having the best time ever, and then of course we're recording this video. But when we look at this crazy 2020 season for the Stars, we have to have a little bit of context here and look back on the failures and the misery and the embarrassments that came before. In 2019, of course, the Stars lost in Game 7 Round 2 versus the St. Louis Blues. Pat Maroon, OT winner, you know what happened. In response, the in the offseason, the Stars signed Pavelski to a three-year contract and Corey Perry as well. Obviously, neither one was amazing during the regular season. Pavelski obviously better, but still not up to expectation. But both guys in this offseason have been, or not in this offseason, in the playoffs, have been pretty solid. Even Corey Perry, especially recently, has looked a lot more solid and a lot more quick on a step. So, when it comes to the Dallas Stars, they didn't really make any huge moves. Pavelski was a bigger move, but it was a uh, age veteran free agent signing and especially in October it's where it kind of felt like a failure they started out the season with a 1-7-1 and record. I think the worst it ever got was that and they had it after like a 4-2 Pens loss. It was just horrific. Just a so terrible start to the season. They couldn't score goals, they couldn't defend, and the goaltending that was so strong for them the year prior in Bishop and Kudobin just kind of fell apart to start out. And that whole sequence, I remember watching some of those games and, and looking back on the record for the Stars like the day after that Pens loss and, and just thinking, what the heck happened here? We're, we're going to get Alexi Lafreniere this season, go, what's going to happen? And right after that 1-7-1 and one stretch, we get into the November part of the season where basically everything changed. The Stars went from 1-7-1 to one to having a 14-1-1 and one run, where they just were absolutely dominant for basically no reason. It's like they flipped a switch, October they were amazing, or uh, terrible, and then in November they just decided to be awesome and freaking amazing. And everything that was going against them in the October run was starting to really come together, and you could see some of that. You could see the speed, you could see the defense, and you could see the goaltending type run. That really looked like a team that was actually going to compete for the playoffs, and they sure needed it after that 1-7-1 start. And after this beautiful 14-1-1 run that just looks amazing, every part of the team is clicking. Boom. Jim Montgomery has been fired as the Dallas Stars head coach, and Rick Bonus will replace him as interim head coach. Just out of nowhere. And... We didn't really get too many reasons for this. The Dallas Stars just said it was for like misconduct off the ice, but it wasn't uh, with his family or it wasn't about his family or anything like that. Um, but we really didn't get any details at the time. And again, this was coming off their run, which was just so impressive. It was crazy. It seemed like to fire Jim Montgomery for any issue like that was just mind blowing. How the heck could you do that? We would later know that Jim Montgomery was facing some alcohol addiction issues. He would later get treatment, and that's fantastic. But at the time, it seemed like the weirdest, dumbest move that could ever be made. And of course, Rick Bonus would replace him, and it would be kind of weird. They wouldn't be nearly as good as they were, and it seemed like until January and February hit, the team was kind of in a lull. They weren't good. 
that they were as bad as they were in October. They were just kind of there playing hockey and you could kind of feel it. I feel like the turning point was kind of in late December and that Winter Classic. Getting that Winter Classic win against the National Predators was absolutely huge. And I feel like that was the day that things changed for the Dallas Stars almost. They host the Winter Classic. They had so, there was like over like, I'm pretty sure like 60,000 fans, obviously the Cotton Bowl, just crazy amounts of support. And it was obvious. It was a great game and the Stars came back and they were just looking solid. And I feel like that was kind of the turning point to where the chemistry started to work, where bonus system started to look a little bit better and work a little bit better with the team as well. And I feel like that's the part where it started to actually come into play. You actually started to see the Dallas Stars look more like a playoff team. And I remember being in that Winter Classic, seeing uh, just reacting to all the goals, just being mind blown that the Dallas Stars actually won a game like this. And that momentum boost carried on to early 2020 with January and February, where the Stars really started to roll. And they were actually putting themselves in a playoff spots and actually looked decent. And it was a lot better of a team on paper. Even with all the things they've gone through so far, they were looking on the up and up and looking like a playoff team. Now, everything was looking solid for the Dallas Stars. In January and February, they were looking very good, and they didn't really do anything in the trade deadline. They really didn't have to anyways. But then we get into the last seven games before the NHL suspended itself, and it gets a little bit more confusing. They lost seven straight games going into the suspension. Same thing with the New York Islanders. I guess we've seen how that's worked out for both teams. Both teams at least made the conference finals. But with the Dallas Stars, they just looked bad. They just didn't look like a team that actually wanted to be in the playoffs. It was like they jumbled them all together and tried to piece them together, though it, it just didn't seem like anything was working at that point. There obviously was a lot of luck involved, some injuries too, but the Dallas Stars didn't really leave too much hope going into what would later become the Bubbles and Toronto and Edmonton specifically um, and all those different stuff. And they kind of continued it into the bubble. We talk about, of course, how their journey has been in the playoffs and the regular season. It really did not look good after the round robin. In that round robin, they went one zero or one three and zero. The one win they had was an uh, was shootout win versus St. Louis, and they only scored really one goal in total. They scored two technically in the game, but it was shootout goal, so who cares? So they scored in total four goals in four round robin games, and it just looked disastrous. That looked like a team that was not going to go, maybe could get beaten by the Calgary Flames, and that would later almost come true. The Dallas Stars were just bad in the round robin, but things really did change versus the Calgary Flames. There was one big moment, of course, in game four where the Flames could have gone up three to one in their series, but the Dallas Stars were able to continue play and able to get the win there, and the season was, or the series was history. Then we go on to Colorado, where everything is just going crazy. They have a three to one lead. What the heck is happening? They get a little bit overexcited. Colorado has big momentum after that game five win they win game six and they're able to force game seven and it looked like for a while there they were going to win that series until Yol Kivaranta out of nowhere being uh, substituted for Andrew Cogliano just comes out hat trick scores in overtime sends the Dallas Stars to the Western Conference final and after this I was perfectly okay if they lost versus Vegas and I was expecting them to still lose versus Vegas I think I had Vegas in six or something like that and then the Dallas Stars have a three to one lead and out of nowhere the Dallas Stars are in the same situation that they once were in the Colorado series. They were up three to one. They had the chance to just choke their opponents and get the series win. But then Vegas came back. They made it one to zero, then they made it two to zero. And at this point, I was thinking, Vegas might win this series. With the way they're playing and just the luck, unlucky bounces they've had throughout the series, they're going to continue to get the luck on their side. They're going to continue to hammer the Dallas Stars in their own zone. And it's going to just be kind of a nightmare from game five to maybe even game seven. I felt like the, the Golden Knights were just a matter of time before they forced that game seven and who knows what happened then. But then Jimmy Ben made it two to one. And then Yol Kivaranza out of nowhere once again two to two and then in overtime with the chance to move on to the Stanley Cup Finals Denise Gurionov the rookie who 
was labeled as a bust by so many people just a year ago, maybe a couple of years ago, comes in, scores the overtime winner. It's an absolute bullet, and the stars are on to the Stanley Cup final for the first time since 2000. From one seven and one, from basically the worst team, for basically the worst team in the NHL, to the Stanley Cup final. They could face Tampa. They could get swept. Honestly, I, that might be what I expect. But coming from all that adversity, coming from the coaching change, from the hosting the Winter Classic, from the records, from the high streaks to everything, the highs and the lows, this Dallas Stars team has been crazy. They've gone through basically everything you can go through and have gone to the Stanley Cup Final. And this Dallas Stars team that, again, was basically the worst in the NHL to arguably the best in the NHL from all the demons that they've had to exercise. Round two, game seven, and overtime. Yol Kivarantz actually scores, and then they beat the Vegas Golden Knights in five. Don't even allow them to come back. They come, the Dallas Stars actually come back against them and win it in overtime. Denise Gurionov getting it done. The demons that they've had to come, come over, the adversity that they've had to face has been extraordinary. But here are the Dallas Stars who on one side were just so extraordinarily bad in October to the Stanley Cup Final. Even if they lose in the Cup Final, whether it's the Lightning or the Islanders, who cares at this point? The Dallas Stars have shown that they have definitely come full circle. A team that was so bad and now is so good has done everything, has gone through every challenge it feels like, and are at the other side. If that's not inspiring, then I don't know what the heck is. And I'm also gonna be honest here, 2020 has been really weird and the Dallas Stars making the Stanley Cup final, it might be one of the pieces on top of the cake. Gonna be honest with you, did not expect this coming, but I am definitely here for it. But that'll be it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And make sure you turn on notifications as well. Share this video with your friends. Get the story about the Dallas Stars out there because IMO, it does deserve some sharing. Make sure you also click on this card right here to watch all my NHL playoff talk right away in the playlist. My name is Nathan. I absolutely love y'all. And I love the Dallas Stars. They're pretty fun and pretty cool. I'll see you in the next video or stream. Goodbye.